the way of Will John. And I know it's an impossible task. Who or what are we dealing with? Something internal or something external to us? Well, it's, it's, it's a very deep and difficult question. I think the, the, the short answer is we don't know what we're dealing with. Um, but for me, I mean, I, I'm a neuroscientist. I approach this from a neuroscientific perspective. My question is, can we explain why people would be confronted with these types of entities in the DMT state? Uh, and I don't think, I mean, look, you know, if you go to sleep and you dream at night, right you encounter entities like other humans animals right the the brain is able to construct i mean your brain is always constructing your world your world and that's another point i guess an important point is that your brain is always constructing your world your subjective um, experienced world is this model that's being constructed by your brain all the time uh, and that applies under all circumstances whether you are awake and navigating the environment whether you are asleep and dreaming or indeed when you are at the peak of a DMT trip it's always being generated by your brain um, but the difference is, is when you're awake there's information coming from your senses, sensory information that's helping to kind of constrain and modulate and inform uh, the world that your brain is, is constructing. But the world itself is always this model that, you're, you're, that is being built by your brain. So when you dream, your, your brain is disconnected from sensory information. Uh, but you, you tend to dream, and there have been many, many studies over many decades that have looked at the content of dreaming. We tend to dream about the same things we see in normal waking life. We dream about the same kind of people. We dream about the same kind of animals we see um, in normal wake li waking life. People dream about dogs. They dream about cats and cows and horses, uh, that kind of thing. Um, because that's what your brain has learned, has evolved uh, to model, is, is, is the things that we see in the normal waking world. So it is kind of confounding and to me and very difficult to explain why when you perturb the brain with this very simple plant molecule it suddenly becomes capable even of constructing these impossibly complex worlds that have no relationship whatsoever to the normal waking world to the world that your brain evolved to to model um, uh, filled with these incredibly entirely non-human non-animal entities that also have no relationship to any kind of character that you would meet in normal waking life or in in your dream world or in the pages of pulp science fiction novels i mean these are um completely disjoint completely different types of entities different types of life forms intelligences uh, than uh, you would ever meet in any other circumstance so uh, for me that suggests that there is something stranger going on here than just your brain making it up you know um, mm -hmm. i think it suggests to me that there could be some alternate source of sensory information your brain is gaining access to um, an alternate source of sensory information which is allowing it to construct this model of this other place within which these other beings reside how that works uh, we still don't know but everything I've been thinking and writing about over the last couple of decades points to that conclusion that it's difficult to incredibly difficult using the paradigm of modern neuroscience to explain how your brain allows you uh, to observe these kind of extremely strange uh, worlds in the presence of DMT. In other words, so, I think they could well be real. 